and welcome to Swiss Peaks. Today is Tuesday, August. I don't know, is it the 22nd? Does that sound good? 23rd maybe? It's one of those days. And this is episode 170 something. Um, I am Amy Beth, also known as Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat S Q R R L on Instagram. Some days, you know, that's all I can say. Um, the episode may be choppy because this is the first day, well, actually, it's the second day that we've had the windows open, and so the dogs are like on high alert to every motion. <laughs> They've been barking like crazy, which I will cut out if I don't forget. But it may just be like a ba, oh, ah, er, later. So just so you know, that's what's happening. Um, this week's episode will contain spinning, knitting, shameless self-promotion, and what we've been doing this week, also known as shenanigans. But the shenanigans come first. First and foremost, shenanigans. I should have brought. Oh well, that's okay. So it's the end of August, and apple picking is available in our. I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. We're Zone Five. Is that what we are? Agriculturally speaking, and apples have been ready um, for a while now. Actually, you can get apples. Actually, you can get apples in Indiana in July. Uh, there's an apple called the Lodi. But I don't get those because I don't care for them. I am a bit of an apple snob. In fact, right now, see, our you pick orchard has three available for you pick. Like Anderson Orchard, that's my orchard that I like the most. And then the orchard, the other orchard that actually was started by that same family but now is owned by another family, which is closer into town, a little ish. Um, they also had three you picks, but then they also had, I think they had like six varieties in house. They had Molly's Delicious. They had there's an Ida Red and a Paula Red. I can never one is an early apple, one's a late apple, and I always get them confused. I think the Paula Red is the earlier one, if I'm not mistaken. They had I said Molly's Delicious. They had that. They had what else did they have? They had another one that was like. It was not red gingham, but it was some ginger red. I think that's what it was. And then, yeah, I try. I just tried all of them because, hi, you must make informed decisions. But I still only really like the Akani's at this time of year. Um, Akani is a is a Japanese hybrid, or yeah, we call that hybrid, right? I get so confused because apples are this weird thing, right, where they produce sexually, which means all of their offspring are different than the parent. So for example, if you plant a Jonathan tree and there's and it's pollinated by whatever other tree, even if it's pollinated by another Jonathan tree, all of the apples that it that are produced from it will be different. Like you won't get a John I mean I don't think yeah, it would be like if you and your partner had a baby and it was exactly one of you like which is weird because now I'm like even okay now I'm getting deep into weirdness but anyway um in my own head <laughs> but anyway so I never know if it's actually a hybrid because a hybrid is like the the, pro the product of two set so is it really that because I don't actually know how they make a hybrid because again you can't just breed the two together. How does that work? I have to look that up. How do I not know that? Is it like a grafting technique where you graft the Jonathan onto the Macintosh rootstock? Is that considered a hybrid in the apple world? No, I just don't know. Hmm. Now that I think about it, now this is really perplexing me and I've got to look it up. And I'll, I'm sure some of you will tell me on the boards. But I'll also look it up, and then maybe we can talk about it more next time, because I'm sure I'll be telling you more about apples, because I have a problem. Anyway, Akani's, I think, are a Jonathan hybrid. With another, with a, uh, with a British breed that I had never, a br breed, well, whatever, I'll just call them breed. <laughs> they have more genetic makeup than almost any other plant apples do. 
they're basically people. I'm just saying. They're just basically they're basically mammals. I'm just anyway. <laughs> but um, cause like ginkgo trees also produce actually, but their ginkgo trees make ginkgo trees. So what is the advent? Now this is like really gonna bother me, and you don't care, so I'm gonna move on. Some of you care. There's like three of you who are like, no, I do care. There's only four of us. <laughs> The rest of them don't care. <laughs> so anyway, so I really like the Akanis for early season apple. Uh, they are not as firm. That's one of the characteristics of most early season apples is that they are, um, they tend to be mealy and they tend to be um, a slightly simpler flavor profile then your later apples. Uh, most early apples also have to be stored in the refrigerator if you're going to store them for any long period of time. Um, whereas later season apples store longer as a general rule. But the Akanis actually do pretty good on the counter. I never, well, sometimes we do get way too many of them. I try not to get too many of them because I do really like a lot of late season apples. Um, but the Akanis are slightly firmer than your average summer apple. They're still not as firm as like well, clearly it's not as far as like a Granny Smith or something. Uh, but they're not to the point where they taste mealy to me, or feel mealy. And they also have a nice tart, crisp, tart, sweet. I would say they're tart, sweet, not sweet, tart. They're yellow, green, not green, yellow. Crayola people, you know what I'm talking about. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, I love them though. And they work well for baking and all the other things you can do with apples. But I also just mostly like to eat them. I love to bake with them, but... I'm sure if we've had this discussion before. I'm really the only person in the household who consistently eats baked goods. <laughs> so if I make the baked good and then nobody else eats it, I feel compelled to eat it just for the sake of like not wasting things, right? So I try not to make that many things. <laughs> So it's been crazy rainy here this week. Actually for like two weeks it's been crazy rainy. So oof, the orchard was very muddy. It was kind of kooky wacky. Um, but we're gonna go back again when it dries out so it's a little bit more. I really like to run and jump in the fields of apples. The orchard apples, apple orchards. Uh, but it was muddy and I was slightly afraid of breaking myself so I had to hold back on my normal physical expressions of enthusiasm. Expressions is totally a word. So, but I still have them in me and they need to be, they need to be released into the world. So I have to go back, of course, clearly, hello, hi. Um, so I did a crafty wool thing. This, this is like part shenanigans, part beginning the crafty stuff. Last year at Rhinebeck, which is New York sheep and wool, I purchased a kit that is a primitive rug hooking kit. Do you know what that is? It is, you get, there's lots of different backing fabrics. This is the burlapy one. They also have like, what is it called? Cotton, is it cottage cloth or something? There's also a linen you can do, whatever. Basically what it is, is a background with a, with a design drawn on it, which you can't see because I already did my kits. And then the, again, because this is a kit, you got a package of wool, you know, sort of scraps basically. I guess you can see this very small. And then you, and then what I did was, you can cut the strips by hand. In fact, she recommends it. And actually, she at the festival she was kind of adamant about cutting them by hand, uh, but I did not. Maybe I should have. Uh, from a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch thick, so you have wool strips. And then you just use like remember latch hooking? It's the same thing except. Instead of just those yarns that you're kind of pulling up and basically like slip knotting, kind of ish. I'm sorry. You have a strip of a wool and you just keep pulling it up through the holes in the fabric and you make your design. Now, my design was originally an oval, and it's you do this in an embroidery hoop or some sort of stretched surface because you want this fabric to be, it doesn't have to be taut, it doesn't have to be like crazy, like boing, but you don't want it to be wrinkled up on itself. So my kit was actually an oval and it had two little bees like right where one of them's right here and one's right here, right? To go with the skep. But I tried to do the bees and they were beyond my skills. 
Also, I totally ran out of black. I had bajillions of the other colors, but black, I think I was supposed to cut the strips a little bit narrower, but the quarter inch seemed so skinny. It seemed like it was going to just disappear any second. And really, I did cut some of them like an eighth of an inch to do the bees with. And I tried to use those, but this cloth is open enough that they like almost, it was hard to get them to work in there because it was so thin that it felt like it was going to fall back through. I don't know. Either way. <laughs> I felt like since Rhinebeck 2016 is coming up that I needed to do my kids. And I'm glad I did. So I decided that, I, that, again, the bees did not work so well for me. So I decided to make mine into a mug rug or a coaster or whatever because clearly... <laughs> I couldn't make it into an ashtray, and that's the other default, right? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, what I did is with my sewing machine, I just, um, I stitched three concentric circles around here just to try to prevent any fraying. And normally what you do is actually bind them, like, with uh, bias tape, or not really, I don't think they call it bias tape, I think they call it, like, binding. It's basically, like, a woven bias tape and you stitch them down. But um, I'm gonna make mine into, since I said make it into a coaster or whatever, I think I'm just gonna glue, the, I mean, I might stitch it. I probably will stitch it. And then what I will do is glue a wool back to it. So wool felt or something to make it, and I'll have to like trim it. It'll be, it'll, it's gonna be kind of a hot mess, but whatever. Sometimes when you do new things, it doesn't work out perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a fun process and it would have worked fine if it had been again if I had just been more talented and been able to do the bees but I couldn't it looked weird so it's much easier to keep it as a flat surface than it is when you're starting to do the edges because that's my only problem is my edges I think I should have stitched them maybe closer together they're very close so on the edge it kind of wants to open up just the tiniest bit between the strips of cloth but it's going to be fine it's going to be fine. And now I can get another kid at Rhinebeck. <laughs> Not that I couldn't before, but I'll, it'll be easier to justify. Because <laughs> I did my woolly felted gnomes kit. I did that one. So I'll get another one from her. I will, it'll look kind of like that. And I will use like some Whoa. super strong adhesive to glue a wool felt back to it. And it'll totally be like a place to have a little coffee cup. Or my... My teacup with honey, okay? That's what I'm saying. <coughs> really? By the way, they're totally barking like a toddler. They're so spinning. spinning. I am so close to being done with my Hello Yarn Organic Polworth. Um, it's in the Bedtime Stories colorway. I have 20 ounces of singles spun. And I have big fat bobbin plot. I have another big fat bobbin to do. But look at that. Eek. I'm pretty excited. I had a moment when I was spinning it that I was like, why did I get this thing with so much stinking purple in it? I'm not a big purple person at all. And there's like big bands of purple in this whiny purple. I was like, what? I mean, not that it's a bad color at all. I'm just like, it's not really my bag. And then I remember, oh, that's right, because I do actually like a purple plied with like a taupe. It's fun. I like that. And so I hope I like it. Eek! But it's beautiful and it's a giant fat bobbin. So 20 ounces of that is about to be done pretty darn soon. As like tomorrow, it's going to be done. I'm going to be done plying it. Hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> and then knitting. Knitting. I finished my I, on the spice roads on the spice market. I cannot remember. I don't know why, why is it on the spice market? I still don't know. Anyway, it's, it's a pattern by Melanie Berg, and I finished it, and it's pretty darn huge. What? Whoa! It's giant, dude. Um, I knit mine with. Madeline Tosh sock in the turn colorway. I almost have a positive. And then I used a Miss Babs um, six color pack. 
It was originally made for one of Martina Bems, that crazy cowl. And I just didn't make it, so it's been sitting in the stash and staring at me because it's lovely. And I didn't know what to do with it. But then when this pattern was released, I was like, oh geez, clearly. The yardage worked out. I had plenty of yardage of all of the colors. I actually ran out of my main color. But luckily, the um, Miss Babs pack had six colors. And this requires five contrast colors. The sixth color was just a smidge lighter than the Madeline Tosh Gray. And I only used it out here. I actually only needed it for these last contrast rows. So like one, no, actually that one is even the right color, I think. No, I think that's it. One, two, three, four, five. So I only needed it for five, well, 10 rows technically. Um, so I was very close to not needing it, but I didn't need it. I'm like no longer sure which way to hold this. That's right, okay, because I flipped it around. It's done! And guess what? While I love it and I think it's awesome, I don't really, these are not my colors. So it's totally gonna be a prize for donating to the podcast. That's right. If you donate to help support the podcast in the months of August, September, and October, um, I'm just, I normally I'm trying to do them in two months, but I'm August kind of threw me off people. I have an August fail just generally throughout life. <laughs> So if you donate to the, uh, the podcast in August, September, or October, you can win this. Or, this actually may be the best prize combination I could ever hope to have. It definitely is. Or, you could win. Have you seen that Lollipop Yarn is now doing like duo sets? Lollipop Yarn down. So this is a 50% merino, 50% silk. So it's mega fancy. And this is a color Caviar Dreams. And this one is called Champagne Witches. <laughs> the love boat. Anyway, that's probably not even the right thing, is it? Why did that come up? Oh, because it's the same time period as, what was that show? Lives of the Rich and Famous. Is that what it was? No, it was something, something. Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. I heard you. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> I don't know why that associated with Love Boat in my head, but again, I'm sure it's the same time frame. But anyway, so anyway, Joan has donated these to the show. Oh, I don't normally accept donations, but Joan totally sent these unsolicited, and I love her face, so. Those. <laughs> and then, the other prize is one of her self-striping socks yarns. Joe, did you make this? I'm gonna tie it. Oh, you're such a trickster, Joe. This is the Beefcake base. It says her sport weight, 8020. And it's, I love that base. Check it out, people. What? This is Indian Summer. Five rows of pumpkin so spice, saffron, moss, blue ridge, wood pile, and then the pumpkin spice mini. Put the heels and toes if you want to. So again, if you donate to the show in the months of August, September, and October, you could win my On the Spice Market. You could win Joan's beautiful lollipop self-striping in the Beefcake Base Indian Summer. Or you could win one of her awesome new duos. Shut up. It's true. You could win all of those things. So, if you don't know how to donate to the show, well, I'll tell you. If you're on a regular PC or desktop -y thing, and you're on a non-mobile device, how about that? Then there's a donate button to the right on the podcast on the podcast homepage, which is thefatsquirrel.com. If you're on a mobile -y device, just scroll all the way to the bottom. Either place, it'll be a yellow donate button, and that will be awesome. Sorry, this the gang, the uh, I can't remember what this fabric is called now. Anyway, it's the way it creases and stuff in the light. I was like, oh no, there's a giant hole in that bag. No, it's just a shadow. Okay. okay. So, okay, those things. Ah! And I'll do the prizes the first podcast in November. That's right. But this is a really fun knit. Um, it's a big, it's a big dude. Because I think there's 30 grams of each of the five, well, there was end up being six contrast colors, but 
I think there's 30 grams in those Miss Babs polydactyl sets. And you use, you don't use the whole thing, but I used close to the whole thing. So what would that make it? 150 plus, it was like 250 gram shawl. So it's pretty big, close to it. It's like a two and a half skein shawl almost. And it's a big gal. Uh, but it is fun because there's only three different sections essentially. And so you only really have to look at the pattern at the beginning of each change. And it's just like, oh, okay, so I'm going to do the same thing I did with the, the dark blue on the light blue, except, well, I'm literally going to do the exact same thing. Um, so you just like have to remember how, like you have to look at to see how many times you have to do it. It's the only thing you have to do. So it's a nice, it's enough that it's not just straight up garter stitch. Oh my gosh, want to die. But it's very easy. You don't have to think, oh, I can't do that because I'm going to be watching a show and I don't think I can look at a pattern. And it's not like that at all. So it's that nice sweet spot between completely mindless knitting and pretty mindless knitting. <laughs> Some people don't like to do this like little fun color pop stitch because it has a knit three together, yarn over knit three together. And some people uh, have trouble with that. I'm a really loose knitter, so it doesn't give me any So I enjoy knitting that quite a lot. And it is a super wash merino with nylon. And I, I'm not sure if it was Tosh Merino sock or the twist light. It might be the twist light in the turn colorway. I'm almost positive it is. So the newer one with nylon in it. But anyway, so it's on 100%. Oh, one of the things I did want to <laughs> one mention One thing is, I did want to talk about, about shawls of this size. Actually, really shawls of any size. Um, how I block them. And I know that I've mentioned this before, but some of you don't, you know, some of you are newer to the show or, again, don't watch every episode because you yeah, got things going on. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the ways I block garter, stop, or garter shawls is by, actually, the almost... I would say 90% of the time, if it's a garter shawl, I block it like this. Because it's a white background and I know that that is a concern for a lot of people is getting the bags painfully dirty. Um, but these, I could not get this fabric, did not want, it just wanted to warp like crazy. So your houses are all on hills and they will be discounted. <laughs> Because they are definitely not, per they are not parallel to the bottom of the bag. <laughs> so anyway, so there's those. But I love the fabric enough that I was like, ah, maybe you'll like it too. And then, apples. Of course. Of course there are apples. So there's going to be small wedges and large wedges of this awesome cotton linen print. There's this colorway, which is my favorite. I almost stole it all to make a skirt. And then I didn't because what would really happen is I would steal it and then it would just sit in the stash forever. <laughs> Cause I'm just like to think about sewing things for myself. Don't actually do it. <laughs> so there's also this colorway. If you like a red or apple. Oh, so fun. I'll just, again, also in the small wedge and the large wedge. And then this is from an a long time ago. There's gonna be a few chevrons of autumn awesomeness. Let's see, there's can't quite yeah, there's also this beautiful red in there. So those that just be in the large wedge. And then Super Crazy Squirrels are too pink. That's right. A few of my favorite things. It had to be the crazy mossy lavender squirrel combo. Okay. Okay. And then very last, but certainly not at all least, is this great woodland party theme. I did it, I did um, an update with this a couple months ago and it went really fast. So I was able to get my, that or the fabric was back ordered at the time, but I was able to get my hands on a little bit more. So there will also be some sweater bags and that. And again, they also have a contrasting bottom just because of the white background. And they're so heavy. I don't want to say that they're dancing because it's the end of August, but they're definitely dancing because it's the end of August. <laughs> August, if I could burn you in effigy, I would. <gasps> oh, I should be shit to myself. But I'm not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, so lots of fun bags. All of my favorite things to help with August. 
because it'll be September and it'll be October and it'll be right back. <laughs> not that I'm like trying to race ahead because I'm really not. But it's nice to look forward to things, even if you're not only living for the, f you know what I mean? Like you can still live in the present and look forward to things, I think. I think you can. Okay, I think that's all. So the board game stuff will come next. They're actually just card games. None of them are board games. Well, one of them, I guess, technically is board game, but it's so tiny. And I'll see you next time. Bye.